right, so we're going to do a little tomato tour. I did. I took you guys on a pepper tour in the beginning, and so now we're going to do a tomato tour. And so what we got here, I'm just going to show you, because I'm not going to read off every tag in here. I'm just going to kind of show you what I got. It's only half the garden right now. And I'm kind of holding off planting the other half, and mainly because I'm having a couple problems like I usually do in my garden. And... One of the problems is that little fella right there jumping. And what that bird is doing is it's going around and everywhere I lay down leaves, it's going and digging up all the leaves. And what the problem is with that is that uh, the ground dries up very quickly. And when you have hot days, it'll dry out your tomato plants very fast. It'll go right into a wilt. Eventually, that could cause your tomato plants to stunt or uh, even kill them eventually if they keep getting hit with uh, excessive dryness. So when you got 90 plus degree days and you only want to get away with watering it once in a day, you really got to put a very heavy mulch down like leaves or wood bark mulch or something like that. You know, you got to have a very thick layer to keep that tomato uh, root system moist that you water it with in a day and it'll absorb that water. Eventually the roots will go deep and it'll really grab more moisture. But when a bird comes in and they start digging for worms in your garden. Now this whole thing was all messed up. I just got done watering it and putting it all back together. But when you see that, it, I, I thought it was squirrels at first. But then I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't see a squirrel. But I always see this one robin hanging around my garden constantly. I never see the robin in there doing anything. It literally waits for me to walk away. <laughs> when I walk away then it does all kinds of damage. So one of the ways I'm dealing with that is I put the leaves down and then I put branches all the way on top of the leaves. So she can't use her beak like a, sort of like a shovel or a crane, just digging away at things. So that's just gonna make it really hard for her. I don't care if she pokes into the leaves. I just don't want her pulling the leaves back because when you pull the leaves back, the ground dries right out and uh, my tomato plants wilt. And I have to check this three or four times a day because this bird's coming in here and doing this constantly. And it's causing a lot of problems. So I'm going to deal with that bird. It's only the one robin doing that. I'm going to deal with that one. So anyway, on with the tomato tour. So as you can see, we got all our tomatoes lined out. This whole thing here is all going to be tomatoes. And then you can see on the other side of that fence, I cleared out a four-foot patch on the other side and I'm going to finish off all my tomatoes on that side and I'll probably put a few tomatoes on the other side of the greenhouse um, but this is mostly going to be tomatoes I do have a few pepper plants here on the end and I might put some other things down there because I'm going to continue that row all the way to the end so I might I might do some uh, I don't know maybe some cabbage or something because it, it gets full sun right there so I might do something like that but anyway that's what it looks like out here so I'm not going to go over every every uh variety of tomatoes and they look kind of weathered and all that's because i brought them from the inside the greenhouse to out here and they're all yellowing up and part of that reason is is not watering enough but that direct sunlight i mean we haven't had rain in like three weeks now and the ground is just parched dry i mean it's literally been cooking at 90 and 100 degrees every day for the last three weeks like between 80 and 100 we have like I don't know, two or three days that hit 100 easy. and But the sun is just absolutely cooking all day long. And so my plants are taking a little bit of a uh, heat stress right now. In fact, some of them are getting some sun scald on them. But as soon as they get adjusted to out here, along with the watering and everything, and they get their roots down into the ground, uh, they, they're going to bolt upwards. And so they'll be used to being out here. Now, I did plant my tomatoes, just so you guys know inside the pots okay one of the reasons why i did that is exactly what i told you squirrels and chipmunks and birds digging in there pulling my tomato plants out of the ground this is very common out here where i, where I live and they've ruined a couple of tomato seasons on me already because of this problem so i just put them in the pots and i planted them that way but once they get big enough then i might plant them into the ground directly i might but i'm going to end up breaking the lower roots but yeah i did plant them this way Hopefully the roots can find a way through the holes and then get down to the bottom and continue to grow. And I won't need to um, worry too much about that, but it still might get root bound. So 
I'm not sure how to deal with that, but we'll see as I go. I might have to lift them and then pull the pots off and then replant them. Not sure I'm going to deal with it just yet. So just wanted to show you that. All right, so inside here. Right now we have all these right here. These are, you can see they're nice and dark green and everything. That's what they look like when I planted them outside. Now they're all kind of yellow and weathered and all. That's because the sun is absolutely been cooking beyond belief and uh, I did let them dry out a few times and uh, it caused problems so I, I got a list I'm going to show you all the tomatoes that I got on the list I'll just scan through them really quick and uh, maybe I'll run through a couple of these varieties let's see right here we have the uh, right here Barnes Metal Barnes Mountain Gold, right there. We got we got Galapagos Island, the minor version of it. We're regrowing that. A little late start on that, but that's okay. Uh, it'll produce fruit by the end of the year. Easy. Uh, let's see, right here we have the Blonde Kafkin tomato. So that's a little small, but tomatoes pick up very fast, so I should be getting tomatoes out of that by August. Uh, variegated tomato. Been having a lot of problems with this tomato variety lately. I'm not quite sure what's going on with it, but... I've uh, been having problems with it, so we do got one coming up, and uh, hopefully we get new seed from that. We have the Black Beauty right there. We have the white, the wild pink cherry tomato, Humboldt Eye. It's a cherry tomato. It's a wild variety. It's not your typical solanum like a persicum. It's a Humboldt Eye, whatever. Let's see what else we got here. We have uh, Mini Parvioli or something. Again, we'll go over these once we... Um, you know, once we get down to the brass tacks, as I say, and uh, we're getting ready to review them, we will definitely, um, you know, we'll go over the details. Here's the Jolt Tomato or Tomatito right here. This is the Tomatito. I don't know if this is a thorny plant. It's not thorny right now, but uh, I figured I'd give the Jolt Tomato a grow and uh, do a review on it. Now, Jolt Tomatoes, there are several different species of it. There's black, there's red. Some are actually native to the United States, so I'm not sure if this is a native to the United States variation, but it could be. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what comes out of it once it uh, starts to produce fruit, so look forward to that. We have the wild Mexican tomato, which is this. Don't know anything more than that. That's how I received the seeds. That's how we are going to review it. And then over here we have Harvard Square. Never heard of these brands before, by the way. And uh, let's see, down here <clears throat> we have Lemon lemon Ice Dwarf. This is a dwarf tomato. I am growing a lot of dwarf tomatoes this year. And uh, mainly because I'm, I'm looking for smaller variety tomatoes that don't get like 30 feet long, you know, that I can grow a whole patch of those and just be able to work with that. I mean, I still grow the other tomatoes, but I need a patch for myself. So I'm looking for something smaller, higher production, produces early. So we're trying a lot of these bush and uh, dwarf variety tomatoes. So that's one right there. We have... What's this one called? Sweet Scarlet Dwarf Tomato. Another dwarf. we got the Kibik. I don't know what that is. I know it's a potato leaf. And you can see what the slug... This is slug damage too, by the way. When you see these types of holes, that's slug. So there's a slug in my garden somewhere that I need to uh, find and uh, eliminate. Because one slug can ruin your whole season. One slug. Because it, it, slugs are very predatory, and they also are very territorial. So one slug or two slugs or three slugs, whatever, are in your gar in this particular area will pretty much graze this entire area. And the other slugs ain't, ain't going to have a problem with because they have their own areas. So you got if you see a problem with slugs in your garden, if you eliminate those few that are causing a problem, you'll pretty much stop the problem in its tracks for at least a while anyway until the new ones come in. So, yeah, keep your eyes out for the slugs because that's they've been doing some serious damage in here. I, and I never expected that to happen in a greenhouse, but here we are, right? That's why I built the greenhouse. Uh, we're growing a husky cherry tomato again this year. This is a very popular tomato. A lot of people like this tomato. So we're growing that one again. Scarlet Heart Dwarf we got there. We got the Strut, Strut Desert Pea Tomato. I guess that's a current tomato. We have the Dwarf Awesome Tomato. 
we have the I don't know kangaroo paw tomato right here I'm not sure why they call it that I never heard of these names before but you know we're gonna review them anyway so uh, you guys can decide if you might want to try them or not uh, let's see here we got boxcar willy back there we got old German we've grown that before we got rising trobe tomato we have the blue bayou we got the warath warathta warath uh, we have Barry's crazy tomato right there. Yeah, that's a really that is a crazy tomato. I'm gonna admit that I really like that tomato a lot Barry's crazy. That's a fun one to grow We got what well, there Sarah's love back there. We got pink accordion We got San Marzano Gignanti number three. We got the spud viper I'm not sure why they call that one a viper. I hope it's something interesting what else we got there? We got White Queen. Uh, we have, let me see here. White Queen, we got Strawberry. We got White Beauty. What else we got there? We got Lemon Boy. German, this is a German green, but uh, something strange came out of that particular one. I separated this variety by itself. It was supposed to be a German green tomato, but this one came out like with parts of it were yellow, like yellow in color, like almost striped and patchy. So I didn't know if maybe there was something wrong with the tomato, but it tasted fine. So I figured I'd grow that again this year and to see what comes out of it. And uh, we'll, we'll take a better look at it at the end of the year. So we will review that one. What else we got here? We got the brandy wine pink. We have... Purple Cherokee, we're growing out again. We've we, you've seen a lot of these. That's the plum lemon. That's been really popular lately. I saw 99 cent seed on that one, so a lot of people like to buy and try that one. It's a fun tomato to grow. I mean, it's not the best tasting thing in the world, but it's definitely a fun tomato to grow, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. We got the Oria or Oria or, or, or I don't know. Uh, Black Beauty, again, I, I happen to have another one that I planted it twice. I thought this wasn't going to make it, and it grew, so it made it. And So now I got Black Beauty twice. I guess we'll move that one up to the front of the house and grow that in a different location to see how it does. Now, I'm killing these. I've been having problems with the uh, flea beetles. Really, really doing a lot of damage. Really, I don't know where they're coming from. But they're inside my greenhouse, and they're starting to infest. So when I see them, I crush them. All right, what do we got there? We got the C R N K O V I C G, whatever that is. That's some kind of Russian tomato. So Potec, we got uh, Polish linguisa. I I don't know if I ever did a review on a Polish linguisa. A lot of these, um, you see that I'm doing, uh, all have been. I've never either, either never did videos or I pulled the videos down because of copyright strike because I used music I wasn't supposed to. So um, I pulled them down, or they pulled them down. I don't know. I don't have the videos. Uh, we got the early Susby something. Whatever that is. You figure that one out for yourself. We got that one to review. We got the Gua, G Gua Hito. Gua Hito. Almost looks like uh, Guajito, but it's not. It's actually Gua Hito. Uh, North Carolina, we got that one. That's going to be interesting. We have over here the Garden Peach. We're regrowing that one again. These are all from my own seed, too, by the way. Except for, I don't know, there's a number of these varieties that are new. Some of them were sent to me. Some of them I bought from uh, the store, you know, from uh, websites. And uh, a lot of them are seed that I never grew since I bought them the first time, which was before I started YouTube. And some of them are just simply um, stuff people sent me to, to grow and review. I don't remember which are which. I mean, I got almost uh, 200. I'll show you my list. We got the Barsoa Moon Dwarf Tomato Mary's Cherry. And that's going to be an interesting one to review. Mary's Cherry. That's a dwarf tomato. Japanese Black Trifle. This is uh, right here. This is called the um, Lychee Tomato. We got that one. They come up wild. I didn't plant that. So I'll let them grow so I can get the seed. Oh, let's see here. We have our Brazzini, Paul Robeson, Delicious Tomato, Dark Tiger, 
we got over here a dinner plate tomato brandy wine yellow i've been growing that one for like the last three years and i never got around to reviewing it i don't know why i just skip it sometimes i skip tomato varieties and uh, so we're going to make sure we're going to review that one this year we got the whip whip Cinecon, uh peach tomato it's a hairy type tomato very similar to the garden peach tomato it's a very interesting fuzzy tomato uh let's see here we have the uh, Green Acres tomato in the back. We got the Pink Pearl tomato back there. We got the Hank. Got the Hayfield something farm tomato. Egg yolk tomato. Indigo rose. Red pear cherry tomato. It's the red version instead of the yellow. I don't know if I ever did a, a review on the red version. So we're growing it this year. We have the Black Prince which I've grown many times in the past. I just never reviewed it. Boxcar Willie again. I got two sets of Boxcar Willie grown because the slugs wiped out the first one. And then I guess a couple of random seeds came up out of that same tray. So I let it finish out. And so now I got two separate plantings of the Boxcar Willie. Green zebra in the back. We got the brown plum. This is the Russian black plum. Uh, this is a great tomato. I mean, one thing I will say about that tomato, it might be a small tomato and a plum, but it produces so many of them. You, you ain't going to know what to do with them, but they make a great sauce. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. They, those That particular tomato variety makes a fantastic sauce. Uh, what do we got there? Vintage wine tomato. We're growing that one again. That's obviously the... Um, Wild Peruvian tomato, and uh, we, these are all wintered over from last year. You can see their cuttings and stuff, so they're still growing. So we're going to find some different spots in the yard and see where they grow best. So we got a bunch of them kind of just growing around the greenhouse in different areas. We got Smiley Worms. I can't wait to review that one. That one's going to be a real freaky tomato. That one is really strange. Uh, you're going to want to see that one. This is another really strange one. This is called the Stick Tomato or Curl Tomato. And somebody sent me these seeds to review it, and so I looked up, I looked it up, and I've been uh, looking at what it is. It's a very, very strange tomato variety, and um, so that's it right there. We are definitely going to be uh, reviewing that hopefully this year. You could see the slugs wiped out. I had like maybe six plants growing. They wiped out most of them. Only one survived. Hopefully this one will grow good, correctly, like the way it's supposed to. And uh, I got another one down there, but that one's kind of like stunty. You know, so I, I don't know if that one's going to go, but I got at least one. I don't think this other thing, they chewed the top off it. Man, it was bad this year with these friggin' slugs, man. And then we got the, whatever this is, Malatitsi Brawn. I'm assuming that's what it says. Uh, again, slugs wiped that one out. That one plant happened to live. And uh, hopefully they don't do it again. And we can get this one where I don't have to replant it. Oh, I think that's it for tomatoes in here. And I'll just show you, you know, last year's hairy tomato where I grew that thing out here. Look at this. You see all this? You see all that stuff? They're growing all over my lawn. They're all over this. This is one of the reasons why I don't want to plant out here. I was going to plant, you know, my row of tomatoes on this side because they really grow good here, tomatoes. And so I was going to plant them here. And so after seeing all this stuff come up wild on its own, you can't sit here and pick all this out with your fingers. You're just not going to be able to do it. You see all that? These are all wild, hairy tomatoes by the millions of plants. Look at this. There's patches of it. I mean, this stuff is, this whole side of the greenhouse is completely covered with it. So I said, you know what, just leave it here and uh, let it do what it's going to do. And uh, I don't know, I just won't plant here, I guess, because once these things get going, it's going to be a literal nightmare to deal with trying to uh, plant around these things. Because this thing's going to get completely covered, you know, so... I might try over here. I don't think there's any of those things coming up. And a few that do come up, I can pull those. Look at my, um, look at the size of my, um, a mullein plant here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna collect seed from this. And then I'm gonna, um, I'll offer the seed on my website. A lot of people have been asking me for mullein. The 
for this particular plant. So here's a good one. There's a couple. I got a bunch of these growing around the property. I'll save seed from that. People have been asking for it. So, all right, I'll make it available. I didn't show you this last time for my peppers. I wanted to shoot a separate video on this by itself. But what you see right here, about two inches down into the soil, or an inch and a half or so down into that soil, I put about an inch layer of seed <laughs> all the way through the whole thing. And the reason why I did that was it was old seed. It was all seed that's like 10 years old. I mean, it was old. I was just going to dump it out, but I, I like to do this to see what actually grows out of seed that's 10, 12 years old. I mean, some of the seed was even older than that. I had, I just went through my seed vault and I got rid of all my really, really old seed and um, I just dumped it all in here. And there's a variety, there were varieties of seed in there that I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't have now. I'd have to rebuy them. So maybe some of these will come up. It'll be those. But yeah, there are a lot of them are still sprouting even after 10 and 12 years, which is very rare for peppers. Pepper, pepper plants don't normally um, sprout anything later than four to five years. You usually have problems with it. It goes from like a 90% germination rate down to like, you know, 30 and 40%. So you have to pretty much cycle at least every two to three years. You know, anything longer than that, you can't do anything with it. It's very unpredictable. Um, so, yeah, that's about it with the tomatoes. I just wanted to show you that. I promised you a tomato garden tour. And uh, maybe I'll just shoot a regular little tour around the uh, yard and show you what's going on. A separate video. I know that there's people who like to watch my tomato videos. And then there's people who like to watch my pepper videos, but they're not interested in them. So I make these separate like that for those people. And so you guys get to, uh, you know, to come along if you're kind of just interested. But I'll shoot a separate garden video. You know, give us a regular tour. I'll walk you around, show you what's going on around the yard. So anyway, that's the whole bowl of wax. Let me just show you really quick what's going on here. All right, so this is my my uh, seed growing roster for this year, and so I'm I'm writing everything down, and the main reason why I'm writing all this down is so I could keep track of what lives and dies and what I need to review. When you're reviewing this many friggin' tomatoes, look, I mean, look at all these pages of tomatoes. When you're reviewing that many tomatoes, you got you just, you can't remember which ones you did and you didn't do. So, I mean, there's there's a lot here. There's probably 150, maybe 200. But I'll scan you through, and uh, you can read from there. So my spelling ain't the best in the world. My handwriting really, really sucks. But this is pretty much what it what you should see. And I'll just scan you down every page. This is page two, and I kind of do this for myself too, so I have a video of. Uh, you know, video reference of what I have in case I need to go back and check it. I'm going to, I'm also going to be uh, putting a numbering system for each variety so I can just number the plant and if I have to look it up, I can because these tags, they, uh, after a while, they just bleach out and then I don't know what it is. So I need to do a numbering system and I'm going to, pr I'm going to stamp that into some kind of an aluminum plate or something, a little piece of aluminum can or something and just hang the tag number by each one of those. I'm going to have to do that because there's no other way to do it. After a few months, this stuff just vanishes. So here we go. Fuzzy Wuzzy. I'm going to show you that one in a second. I'll take you out there really quick. I've got a couple in here that are pretty good. All right. Show you really quick. All right. That's page two. Page three. It's a lot of tomatoes to grow, guys. It's not just growing them, it's reviewing them, separating the seed form, then processing the tomato afterwards. I have to turn it into sauce or can it or something. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not paying attention. Page four. Now, this, these last two pages are all my older variety of tomatoes. Most of you have seen videos on these, but we're just going to regrow them. I'm not, probably not going to be doing reviews on most of this stuff. 
I might hit a few of them. I can't possibly shoot videos on every one of these. It's just impossible, guys. But I will hit all the ones I definitely didn't do before. Maybe give you a glance at one or two extra, you know. I got to focus on all the new stuff. I don't know why I keep drifting. I'm sorry. And that's about it right there. Castelluto Genovese. I know I didn't spell some of these things right. I'm just doing it from the top of my head. So pretty much everything on these pages are going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be doing, uh, we're growing and doing reviews on just the very last couple pages. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them. Let me just show you really quick the fuzzy wuzzy. I know you guys are going to want to see my fuzzy wuzzy. So let's show you my fuzzy wuzzy. This is a really, really strange tomato. This one here. I hope this one picks up. It's really been getting the hell beat out of it from the rain. But look at the leaves on this thing. The whole plant is like a furry, soft, fuzzy, furry type. It has a fur all over the plant. Look at that. This is a very strange plant, guys. Very, very strange. It's really strange. I don't know if it's dwarf or not, but you can see the stem. See how the stem's all furry and stuff? So, yeah, it's definitely a strange one. This is going to be one you're going to want to definitely see me do a review on. We'll go over all the brass tacks when I get, you know, down to that area and we're ready for it. But a lot of these really took a beating really bad. They really did take a beating. I may even have to replant some of these from uh, from from scratch because they just they're just really uh, the heat has just been absolutely cooking. And I missed one day of watering and almost killed all my plants. So <laughs> you gotta water them every single day. And like I said, I have them in pots. So they're not getting that water and they dry out. But I have to leave them in the pots because you can see what the birds are doing. Look at this. You see what they do? They dig these little holes out. And because they do that, my whole thing dries up. So it doesn't, there's no moisture in there. But hopefully one day it'll rain again. I'm not sure if it ever will. You can see today's like the only day with overcast that I've seen in the last three weeks. It's been absolutely sunny and cooking, which is normally good. But when your tomato plants are going through this kind of shock, it's it's really hard for them to snap out of it. But they will snap out eventually. They're not going to completely die. I only had one, one or two that suddenly started dying for like no reason at all. And I don't know why. So I yanked it and got rid of it. But here's one of them. Stunted tomato plants. I did a video on this. Now the roots look good. The roots look good. It's in water. Just trying to find out what's going on here. You can see it's got all this, like, maybe even nitrogen burn, it looks like. I'm not sure, but I removed it. It was in its own pot. Pulled it out. Put it in water. We'll see if we can unstunt it. If not, I'm regrowing this from seed again anyway. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. If it does it again from seed, then maybe the seed was contaminated. I don't know. But we'll find out. That's very rare that you see that happen. Here's some of my pepper plants. Got some cool stuff, capsaicin, parvifolium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that in here. I got some cool stuff here. I even got um, the, uh, right here, I don't know if this is going to live, the capsicum tavori. Man, that one's a hard one to sprout. I tried like 30 seeds to sprout that one. And uh, <laughs> that one, that's the only one that came up. So I don't know if I'm going to have any luck with it. But anyway, that's it, guys. That was just a quick tomato tour. I will uh, shoot a separate video on uh, just taking you around the garden and around the yard. And we'll do a separate garden tour from that. All right. So that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.